hello viewers welcome to my channel and today's topic is uh, sodium chloride and why it's uh, important you know Uh, but before starting I would like to request you to like subscribe and share these videos to support this channel And if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com you know uh, Now I come to the topic uh, sodium chloride uh, It's a uh, Sodium symbol is Na and chlor chlorine symbol is uh, chloride is Cl you know so it's known as the chemist lab is known as NaCl, you know, and uh, the commonly known as salt, you know, or table salt, you know. And it's an essential uh, compound uh, our body uses, you know, to absorb and transport the nutrients, uh, uh, maintain the blood pressure, uh, maintain the right balance of fluid, and uh, transmit the nerve signals, you know, like. Uh, transmit sorry uh, the uh, nerve signals and uh, uh, contract and relax the muscles you know and uh, salt is uh, an inorganic compound which means that uh, it does not come from the living matter you know and it's made up when uh, sodium and the chloride they come together to form the crystal cubes you know and your body needs uh, the salt to function but uh, too little or too much salt can be harmful to your health you know and uh, well the salt is frequently used for cooking so it can also be found as an ingredient in the foods or the cleansing solutions you know and in medical cases your doctor or nurse will typically introduce the sodium chloride as an injection you know and uh, you know and uh, you know the next thing is what is the difference between uh, the salt and uh, the sodium you know well you know the fact that uh, uh, many people use the word sodium and salt uh, interchangeably you know but they are different sodium is a mineral okay and uh, it's a nutrient that uh, it naturally occurs you know and uh, uncompressed like uh, uh, processed foods you know like fresh vegetables and uh, fruit they can naturally have the sodium you know and uh, the baking soda has sodium too you know and about 75 to 90 percent of the sodium we get uh, comes from the salt already added to our foods you know and uh, the weight of salt is usually uh, like uh, the combination of 40% sodium and 60% chloride you know. and uh, the next thing is uh, how can you use the sodium chloride well uh, the most common uh, use of salt in the food uh, uh, it's used in the food you know and uh, the uses include like uh, food seasoning you know or maybe act, um, acting as uh, natural preservatives you know or maybe enhancing the natural color of the foods you know and maybe curing or um, uh, preserving meats you know and uh, like creating a, a brine for marinating foods you know so and uh, there's also a wide variety of household uses such as uh, uh, cleaning the pots and pans and removing the stains and greases you know and preventing the mold you know and maybe uh, like salting the roads in the winter to prevent the ice you know so these are the multiple uh, functions you know and uh, the next thing is how do the doctors use uh, sodium chloride medically you know well you know when your doctor prescribes uh, a treatment with salt you know they will use the term sodium chloride and the sodium chloride mixed with water it creates a saline solution which has a number of different uh, medical reasons or purposes you know uses you know and the medical uses for the saline solution include like uh, 
uh, IV drips, you know, or uh, saline flush injections, or maybe nasal irrigation or the nasal drops, you know, and uh, maybe the cleaning wounds, you know, uh, and uh, eye drops, and maybe uh, sodium chloride inhalation, you know, uh, which helps to create the mucus so uh, you can cough it out, you know. And, you know, it's important to consult your doctor and uh, only use the medical saline products, okay? So, which exclude the over-the-counter products like uh, contact solutions as prescribed, you know. And uh, uh, different types of the saline solutions will contain different ratios of uh, sodium chloride to water, you know. And the saline that is used to for the different purposes may uh, also have additional chemicals or the compounds added, you know. And the next thing is how much salt is needed for the body, you know, and a recommended uh, amount of uh, salt, you know. Well, you know, salt and sodium are different, okay. And the salt is 40% uh, sodium and uh, we can uh, get most of the sodium uh, intake from the salt, you know. And there are many companies uh, and uh, the restaurants uh, use salt to preserve, you know, or season and flavor their foods, you know. And uh, you know, the one teaspoon of salt has about uh, uh, 2300 milligrams of sodium, you know. So it's easy to go over the daily value, you know, so. And you know, the average American eat about uh, 34 100 milligram each day so you can limit your sodium intake by eating uh, unprocessed foods and uh, uh, you may uh, find it easier to manage your sodium intake by making more meals at home you know rather than eating outside you know and your doctor may suggest uh, like sticking to low sodium diet uh, if uh, you are at risk of high blood pressure or uh, heart diseases you know and if you have a heart disease uh, you should try to consume less than two excuse me 2000 milligram uh, sodium per day you know uh, although the uh, uh, doctors association they recommend under 1500 milligram you know and uh, eliminating the processed foods like sausages and ready-made meals they make maintaining this uh, uh, easier you know and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching this video yeah the next thing is uh, uh, you know what does your body use sodium chloride for well sodium and chloride play an important role in the small intestine Sodium helps to absorb like chloride, sugar, water, and amino acids. And the chloride, uh, when it's in the form of uh, hydrochloric acid, you know, hydrogen and uh, chloride, you know, is also uh, like a component of gastric juice, you know. And it helps to, uh, your body to digest and absorb the nutrients, you know. And sodium and potassium are the electrolytes in uh, the fluid outside and inside your cells, you know. And the balance between these particles contributes to how your cells maintain your body's energy, you know. And uh, it's also how nerves and the signals uh, to the brain, you know, uh, are sent, you know. And your muscle contracts and your heart functions, you know. So the other important functions are that it helps to send the signals to the brain, to contract the muscles, and uh, uh, to keep the heart function normal, you know. So these are the electrolytes that play an important role, you know, in all these functions. And, uh, you know, your kidneys, your brain, and uh, adrenal glands, they work together to regulate the amount of sodium in your body. And the chemical signals stimulate the kidney to 
either hold on to the water so it can be reabsorbed into the bloodstream or get rid of the excess water through the urine you know and uh, when there's uh, too much sodium in your bloodstream in that case your brain signals your kidneys to release more water into your uh, like uh, blood circulation you know and this leads to an increase in the blood volume and blood pressure you know so decreasing your sodium intake can lead to less water being absorbed into the bloodstream so this result uh, is a lower blood pressure you know okay the next thing is uh, the side effects you know well for the most part the sodium chloride uh, is not a health hazard you know but in excessive amounts it can uh, irritate your eyes it can irritate your skin airways and stomach you know and you can treat the irritation depending on the area you know by rinsing the spot with the uh, plain water or uh, like getting fresh air and uh, you should seek the medical uh, attention uh, if the irritation does not stop you know and uh, as you know the sodium uh, is essential and uh, it's also in large amounts of almost uh, everything that we eat you know so eating too much salt is linked to like high blood pressure increased risk of heart diseases and the kidney diseases increased water retention which can lead to swelling in the body edema you know and dehydration you know and uh, the side effects of the saline solutions like uh, they typically uh, they are administered through the veins you know or uh, now the high concentrations of the saline solution can have the side effects of redness or swelling at the injection site you know and uh, sodium deficiency is usually uh, it's a sign of any underlying disorder you know and uh, the name for this condition is known as hyponatremia and it can be due to like uh, inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion you know which is caused by the disorder that uh, affect the hormone balance certain drugs and the certain medical conditions you know and excessive water intake you know uh, prolonged vomiting or diarrhea a uh, use of some diuretics you know uh, and uh, some kidney diseases and excessive and continuous sweating without proper hydration is also a potential cause especially in the people who Uh, train and uh, compete in like uh, long uh, uh, endurance events like uh, marathons and uh, uh, other long walks you know uh, about 70 to 90% of our sodium uh, which we consume it comes from salt you know or sodium chloride so salt provides an essential mineral sodium that our bodies use for the function such as maintaining the blood pressure and absorbing the nutrients you know and you can also use the salt for seasoning foods cleaning products and addressing certain medical issues you know uh, Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Thank you and goodbye.